From Abuja. Hello, thank you for being a part of our show. We appreciate you. I'm Magnus Paco, and this is Magnus Paco GVA. As always, it's all about how we can raise a level of living. That's what it's all about. In view today, a renewable energy imperative for Nigeria? Can Nigeria continue to try to overcome the ongoing energy crisis with fossil fuels? Or is it a switch to renewable energy sources that we need now as an imperative? We have with us an experienced expert to help us with these issues. Dr. Ransom Owen is the Group Managing Director at ITU. He was the chairman of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission. He will handle the matter for us. But before that, in our hidden economics, the economic violence of energy poverty. Now, up next in our quick view, we rank countries by ease of doing business. That's coming right up. Ease of doing business is an index published by the World Bank for use in evaluating how easy it is to do business in a country. In reality, it is an aggregate figure that includes different parameters which define the ease of doing business in a country. It is computed by aggregating best practices scores for doing business amongst countries. Indicators used in the computation include construction permits, registration, getting credit, tax payment mechanisms, and others. Global investors may review the ranking of a country before concluding investment decisions. In this connection, which of the following countries ranks the highest on the Ease of Doing Business Index rating? Estonia, New Zealand, Norway, and Singapore. Which of the following African countries is not among the top 70 countries in the world in measuring the ease of doing business? Botswana, Mauritius, Morocco, and Rwanda. Stay with us for our answers coming up shortly. Still in view, a renewable energy imperative for Nigeria? But up next in our hidden economics, the violence of energy poverty. The noise of generators is a violence on the people. Darkness promotes violence from armed robbery, witchcraft, cultism, and other social pestilences. Light is more powerful than darkness and always wins over darkness. 
It drives away darkness in many of its agents. African governments and their international partners will have to accelerate any transformation in the provision of energy and electric power if we are to reduce the violence of energy poverty on the poor and achieve our collective ambitions. Access to clean modern energy in Africa, where 620 million people have no electricity, is critical to the success of any efforts to tackle poverty and its violence. The Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, adopted recently at the United Nations, embrace the need for economic development that leaves no one behind, and which in its seventh goal acknowledges the importance of affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. Energy is one of the most critical tools for tackling poverty. It can help us in all the various dimensions of the malady. When people have access to electricity, they can charge their phones and not have to undertake road or foot errands that could be solved by a phone call. Electricity in rural hospitals can also help eliminate avoidable child deaths and even reduce mosquito bites and many more. By lacking access to clean energy sources, over half of Africa's population is forced to resort to biomass such as firewood and charcoal, an option that is economically inefficient and environmentally devastating to their health. Africa's poorest people are paying among the world's highest prices for energy. The violence of energy poverty is high and may even be rising. Our hidden economics for you. Before we start our discussion, here are our quick view answers. New Zealand is the top rated country in the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business ranking. Botswana is the African country that is not among the top 70 in the world in ranking the Ease of Doing Business. For adverts, comments, and sponsorship, please see our information displayed on the screen. Africa has the lowest electrification rate of all the regions of the world, at 26% of households. About 550 million people do not have access to electricity. Without access to energy services, the poor are deprived of the most basic economic opportunities needed to improve their standard of living. Indeed, as we have discussed, what faces the poor from energy poverty is serious economic violence. And so today we have with us Dr. Ransom Owen. He is the Group Managing Director for Power, Infrastructure and Real Estate at ITO. He is the former and pioneer chairman and CEO of the Nigerian Electricity and Regulatory Commission. He's in our studios once again, as he has before, to turn the light on so we can see better the situation with electricity in Nigeria. Please join me in my discussion with Dr. Ransom Owen. All right, uh, Doctor, thank you very much for being in our studios once again. My pleasure. Thanks yeah. for having me. Thank you. Uh, Magoni Studios. Um, they, well, last time you were here, we, we had uh, quite an excitement talking to you. You were very knowledgeable, you, which you, you should be with the great experience that you have in the industry. Thank you. 
Now, the Nigeria has a crisis in energy, as far as as far as anybody knows. Yes, there is an energy crisis in Nigeria, because even if you go back to long ago, when I was centuries ago, when I was connected with the government, we 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 were talking about four thousand megawatts of electricity production, and like I said. Thousands of years later, we're still talking about 4,000 megawatts of electricity production. What, what is the problem? What, what's happening there? What's the problem there? Thank you for the question. The Nigerian power problem is well known because everybody living in Nigeria knows we don't have enough energy for everybody. Mm. And that's why we are the highest per capita income production of electricity. We are all independent power producers in our homes, in your home village, in your city, in offices. We're all producing power. But that power is not enough for everybody to use. The main issues are the three business models that we have. Electricity has three parts, generation, transmission, and distribution. This three-part business model has to function correctly for you to have power 24-7. It is the same way the world over. However, in our context, these three parts are not working okay up to this point. Therefore, because they are not in consonant, it's difficult to say I can generate enough and I can transmit if the transmission cannot be there. The distributor can say I can have power, but I cannot get it to where it should be. So this three-part business model is weak as we term it in the industry. Therefore, the continued effort to revamp the system has to be holistic because the issues are systemic. But, but we have been revamping the system, as I said, since as far back as I can remember. I mean, I, I, I just kind of jokingly said a thousand years. But you, you go back, the last 10 years, yes, the last 15 years, we were talking about how to revamp the system to get That's the system correct. to work right. Yes. And 15 years later, we're still not able to do that. Is that because... And then, of course, we've done, we've done, uh, we've privatized. Privatized, that's correct. And so we've done the privatization. So maybe that was in the bid to try to uh, revamp the system. So can we say that the privatization did not work? No, I, I would beg to differ. Yeah. In 2005, March, the country passed a regulation on how to open the power sector to private uh, participation. In November of that year, the regulator was formed in. The regulator was put in to create a framework for private sector participation. Now, here we must congratulate the government and the people of Nigeria because deregulation has never been rolled back. The government has kept the faith to support the process. So in terms of predictability, that environment is stable. Predictability of what? In terms of the government will not change its mind. Okay. Uh, if investors come in, they can be sure that deregulation has succeeded. Okay. They will not reverse it. Yes, they have not reversed it. Exactly. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. Even in the NIPP power projects, yeah. they, all the successive governments have kept faith. Okay. They have not rolled it back. Right. That gives market confidence at the bare minimum. Mm. You see. So the government has done well. The issue has been the transition to private sector does not automatically bring answers. We needed to have a framework where the regulatory context is ex respected. Once you put regulation in, in place and you change it midstream, mm -hmm. then all the business model will fail. So in our dear country, what has happened is over these 10 years, yes. there's been regulatory uncertainty. And but, that, but, that, but that's uh, 10 years. Doesn't that put you in the picture? Because uh, you, you were chairman you know, of the, of the, that's of correct. the <laughs> Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission. Matter of fact, I was coming to that. So, and that's, that puts you, if we go back 10 years, that puts you in the picture there. So, what, 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 what's regulation? What, 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 when we talk about regulation, what, what are you regulating? Yes. And as, you know, as we were kind of talking before we came on air, if, why well, we don't regulate uh, the, tele, the telecom industry, that's but we correct. regulate electricity. electricity. So, when you were chairman and now, well, what, are they, what are they out there regulating? They I'm doing? glad to be the pioneer chairman, yes. and I have stayed over the last 10, 12 years. That means I believe in the Nigerian pro project. The reason you regulate prices for electricity is because electricity is a critical commodity. Mm. It, there's no close substitute for electricity. And so if we don't make it affordable to all people, some people will be left out. Because of that critical nature, it is also economically speaking an inelastic product. Mm. 
it means that in elasticity, there's no close substitute. And the only way to increase that profit is to continue jacking up the prices. So everybody well, there's will no, There's no substitute to telecom. Yes. I mean, I mean if I call, there's no other way. No, but if, if your airtime is finished, you don't need to talk. Nobody, not everybody has a telephone. But if you are connected to the electricity grid, yeah. we make sure that everybody has electricity. Mm -hmm. The reason we do that is like a diabetic who needs insulin. Mm -hmm. If the prices of insulin keeps going up, they don't have any way to, to, to manage themselves. Yeah. So we regulate that. Mm -hmm. In return for that regulation, we say those who come to the market will have a guaranteed rate of return. Okay. At the same time, yeah. and they have exclusive territory. Yeah. It allows them to plan for the future, and itself it creates market failure, because in a good economic model, you price what you call marginal cost pricing. Okay. But here in electricity, it's called average pricing. Okay. Because you are, you're putting some solar, well, what, hydro. What, 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 so that's, what's that's the, the issue. For, for, the, for the people, what's the difference between the marginal cost? In the marginal cost pricing, you're allowed pricing. to immediately capture the increment in your in your cost of production. Increment of what? Of the of the of, of total cost of production. Okay. If if you have electricity is ten naira, you immediately co collect it in the price you charge somebody. Okay. You know, you you can imagine in Nigeria when the prices of goods change. Yeah. Even for buying okra in the market, they yeah. say, well, the, the dollar has changed. Yes. <laughs> you say, well, mm. what did you use input in, 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 in okra? So you can see immediately impact in yeah. the price mechanism. Yes. In electricity, if you change prices every day, yeah. it's, it will create havoc in the system. Okay. So because of this gradual nature of we manage prices, it creates the ability for you to regulate and cap the profits of the market participants. The profits of MTN are not capped, or Glow, or anybody, they are not capped. They can make as much profit as sure. they want. But the electric companies, we say you must operate under fixed prices. Okay. And the regulator allows you so that gradually you recover your money, but not overnight. So really, it's not average, it's fixed. I mean, because average over something that's not changing. Is, well, the, the, the prices are based on, when say it's coal, hydro, solar, whatever it is, that that energy cost okay. is different, so okay. we'll give you an average price oh, for I the see. product. Okay. So that's where the average comes from. So we'll call it market failure. Okay. Otherwise, it could have been said that free market sets the prices. The, the that market failure where? In the system. If, if that's if the case, free, then the if, government will be no, will if free, no, if free market determine the price, yes. we say it's good. Yes. You know, there'll be equilibrium yes. of supply and demand. Yes. Get the price. But in electricity, we say no. If you allow the market to de 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 determine the price, yeah. some consumers will be left out. Okay. In order not to allow that to happen, we average the prices. So there's okay. cross subsidy. Okay. The people who can pay can subsidize res residential customers. So where is the market failure? I guess that's what I'm trying to look at. Economically, we said the, the market should determine the price. Yes. People should not interfere. Yes. That's that's efficient market. Yes. When it's no longer efficient market yes. and someone controls the price, we yes. say market failure okay. as exists so, so economically. Market failure here. So that's, that's why the, your price is regulated. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Now the on the on the gener okay, you got three categories as you mentioned. Generation, Generation transmission, transmission, transmission and, and distribution. Yes. For for the sake of us, people who are just on the outside looking, where is the government and where is where is there not the government? In today's Nigerian electricity market, yeah. two parts of this model have been deregulated. Yes. Generation has been deregulated and distribution has been uh, deregulated. But yes. the transmission of the high tension yeah. is still a government-owned asset. Why is that? Because government looks at it as a national security issue. It is like the superhighway of power. What about the generation? The generation, any, that, because... Mean, what, if, what if they, they sabotage them? Like, what if no, because right happening? now, the way it's not, you can buy the technology easily to generate power. Yeah. But if you have to put transmission line, you need eminent domain powers okay. to condemn land, people's backyards, yeah. people are ancestral places. Okay. It takes much longer to Absolutely, do it. Yeah. Yeah, so for, it's, for the national interest, it is okay to keep it that way for now. This model, as we have said, obviously to me has not succeeded. Because if, if a country as large as we are, over 180 million people, we're still languishing in the neighborhood of 4,000 megawatts, um, compared to South Africa, where I believe there are probably 50-something thousand. Yes. Um, I, I think that, that somebody could safely say that that's something that, does some, that does not seem to be working, especially when, especially when they say we have an installed capacity of near 12,000, and then you have an actual output available capacity of 4,000. That, that doesn't seem like something. It's not even 50% of the installed capacity that is working. Does that seem like something that is working to you? It doesn't seem like it's working to me. 
But I'd, can we continue this way? Is there any hope? Continue? I'd like I like to disagree with the truth, oh. but it will not help. Okay, me. that's very good. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> if, if that's the case, should is is has the time come? Is this happening also because of too much dependence on fossil fuels? Can can, can renewable energy sources, a, a, a renewable energy platforms, help us any? Access to environmentally and socially sustainable energy is essential to economic growth and poverty reduction. As we have already said, over 650 million people are without access to electricity across Africa. Indeed, across the world, every year, fumes and smoke from open cooking fires kill about 1.6 million people, and these are mostly women and children as they die from respiratory diseases. According to the African Development Bank, the entire installed generation capacity of the 48 sub-Saharan African countries is just 68 gigawatts, just about equivalent to that of Spain alone. And as much as one quarter of this capacity is unavailable because of aging plants and poor maintenance. It is clear, therefore, that current approaches involving dependence on fossil fuels for adequate electricity may never work as a rule across Africa. Communities that are rich in fossil fuels may, however, find it cheaper to continue to lean on it. According to a story in The Economist magazine, Africa has some of the world's best potential sites for wind, solar, and hydropower. The story suggests that investors appear ready to test the market by putting up a few windmills than by committing to big power stations. What seems like a workable solution for Nigeria and many African countries is switching to individual renewable energy platforms, just like was done in telecommunications when there was a switch from costly landlines with buried cables to cellular telephony that does not require much infrastructure and construction. The renewable energy solution, if its costs continue to decline, may well be an imperative for ending the energy crisis in Nigeria and the rest of Africa. Something dramatic and extraordinary must be done. To be globally competitive, we'll have to dedicate at least a quarter of our extracted natural resources for the next decade to the provision of power, and that will be using renewable energy where fossil solutions are prohibitive. I'm Magnus Paco, and that's my view. Oh, oh, oh.